Hello and welcome to Service Above Self. I'm Clark Mason. We're here again with Shivraz Bichari from Technology 101. And today he's going to tell us more about ways to get around our computer and how to make the computer our friend. Absolutely. Good evening. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, this, for, for this time around, what we're going to talk about is um, a little more about getting under the hood for Windows 7. We're going to use Windows 7 as an example operating system. It's what's out in, in new laptops. And uh, we can actually jump right in. The place to go to uh, kind of go under the hood, I'm going to use analogies like we have used in the past, but it is to go to the control panel. And the control panel in an operating system is the core it's almost like the engine in your car. It's, you, you open it up and it's got all the settings out there. It's like your dash to an extent. You can control and change a lot of the settings. And what we're going to do is uh, basically make sure that people are aware of what's out there. So once you know what's out there, you can go in and explore and click around and see what works for yourself. Look at the features you need for yourself, make edits and kind of customize your computer. Uh, to work for you. All right, let's find out what's under the hood. Let's, let's go right away. So um, it's uh, very simple to get there. Uh, the the button on the bottom left uh, is pretty much, uh, as it says, it pops up. It's start. And that's where you want to go. So you, I'm going to left click that once. It's giving me a lot of options. I'm going to go to the control panel right here. I'm going to click that, and that opens up uh, the home screen for the control panel. And what we're going to do essentially is we're going to go over the options that are out there. Uh, at a very generic level, so that for, for people viewing this program, they can kind of, they feel comfortable about what, sometimes when you're working with the computer, you don't want to click, because you don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we see a lot of that with the customers uh, for Technology 101s. So we want to make sure that we give you the confidence, and you know, just make you feel comfortable clicking through. Click away, nothing's going to go wrong. And uh, explore Windows 7 uh, using that model. So I'm going to start with, and we're just going to go down the order. So I'm going to start with system and security. And what it does is, if you can see, that the, the options that were out there on the main or the home screen now come on the left. So it still gives you what's out there and what you can do. And there's some more details in terms of uh, options uh, under, it's almost like a sub-menu. So I'm going to go over uh, some of the, uh, the options uh, right now. So the action center is almost like a high-level dashboard. It tells you what's uh, what's in uh, on your computer any messages any prompts and stuff like that uh, in this case it's asking me to install an antivirus <laughs> it's a red flag and it's is there for a reason you should have oh, an absolutely. antivirus sir, sir, on certainly your uh, you know getting on the internet is something that's made a personal computer a lot more fun but absolutely. it does open you to a lot of potential problems sounds good and of course it's going to help you find a program online and there's a lot of uh, programs out there i'm not going to recommend any but uh, it's just uh, t the computer selling you Take care of me. But you definitely should have. <laughs> I, I definitely should have. Some. Okay. And so it's by uh, okay. Perfect. Any one of them is better than not having one at all. Uh, totally. Totally. Um, then uh, there are some other unreported problems. It's going to prompt you. It's, it's exactly what I'm saying. Is the computer will tell you what you need to do. So I would feel comf completely comfortable clicking on check for solutions to know what the computer is recommending for me. So it's things have gotten uh, way ahead uh, from that perspective. Set up backup. I've not set up any backup to backup my files. Again, it's it's a yellow flag there. Uh, so just as a way, the computer tells you what to do and what you can do. Uh, and it's just a way, uh, once you click that button, I'm not going to click it right now, but it'll guide you through a set of steps. You just look on the screen, it'll tell you what to do, what to select. You select what you want, and you can actually uh, back up uh, some of the things you care about in your computer. Very good. Sounds good. So that's uh, one of the settings right there, the action center. I'm going to go to uh, the next option. That's the Windows Firewall. Well, what's a firewall? Firewall is uh, what it says. Uh, would you actually ever cross a firewall, Clark? <laughs> well, you know, I, I do, but I prefer that the fire didn't go through. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, it's essentially a wall, uh, which uh, is a deterrent for anybody outside to kind of get into your system. Uh, it's uh, in, in, in the case of the computer, it's, it's ports. It's, it's like locking up your doors. It's like having a fence around your, your house. Uh, those are the analogies that come to my mind. The firewall just sounds very fancy. And it's, it's essentially what it does. It's, it covers or protects your computer so that people coming in from outside cannot access your computer. As you know, we, we definitely connect to the internet a lot. Right, so that's one of the problems is that unfortunately, you know, the internet is a two-way street. Sure. I mean, you have to put requests out there and with that information comes back, but sometimes information that you may not want in the forms of, of viruses and other types of uh, malware sure. uh, can get into your computer and one of the ways that you can keep it out is through the use of a firewall. 
Absolutely. And uh, the analogy, you know, which we can take is, you know, just protecting your house. You have, you know, you have doors, uh, you have windows, you have a fence. Uh, so in just in terms of how the firewall works, uh, think of all these openings to or inside your house as ports or ways intruders can get into your house. And in the computer, you block those ports. So instead of just having a door, you actually, just having the opening for a door, you actually have a door with a lock. And you let some people come in, some people you do not. And it's the same concept with Firewall is, it's, it's a protection which allows some softwares, some people that you trust to come inside your house, but it prevents or blocks everybody else. So there's various ways to do it. And you can feel relatively comfortable if you have a firewall well configured that other people are not going to uh, get into your computer. And uh, I feel happy to say that I've got a green check mark. Very good. Uh, like, so uh, what you I had pass on center. that one. Very yes. Good. And, I, and again, as you can see, if you look at the screen, it tells you, hey, you know what? It blocks connections from coming into your computer. So it, as the screen tells you more than what, what, you, what you would expect. Uh, so I'm going to go back. We're going to look at some other uh, other settings. Uh, I'm going to click on system. Uh, and system, we've actually sc seen the screen uh, in uh, one of the previous episodes. So I'm not going to go too much into detail, except what this screen does it is, is it tells you what hardware um, and what operating system is actually installed on your computer. Um, and uh, going a little more advanced, uh, there's device manager. I'm not going to go into details, but it kind of gives you the whole list. I just want to make sure I clicked it. OK. Uh, give you the whole list of everything that's on your computer. So it's a good way for you to see, assess what's out there in case you need to make any changes or just understand what's under the hood uh, for Windows 7. Right, in some cases, if you want to purchase some software, you might not need to know what level of uh, system as far as uh, Windows or what processor or how much memory that you would need for a particular software, and this is where you would find that exactly. out. Exactly, so you know if, exactly if you can actually run it, it's the place to come and see if you, your computer can actually do that or not. So in, in many cases, like for example with memory, you can just upgrade your memory. So you don't really need to get a new computer. There's other ways to make your computer go faster, and we've kind of discussed some of those concepts before. But we can actually make it go faster without actually replacing your whole whole machine, oh, that's which great. is very good, and it's a very effective way to do it. All righty. Um, so let's go to the next part, which is a Windows Update. And uh, what Windows Update essentially does is, like anything and everything uh, in a house, a car, that needs fixing, Windows often needs fixing or improvements or updates mm -hmm. because they learn that there's something that works but they have a way to do it better or there's something that is maybe semi-broken which they have a fix for which they identify after it's been out so the same way as you would fix your house your car a uh, windows uh, would fix itself and the way to do that is with windows updates so when you have that turned on you're allowing in this case actually microsoft to send you updates yes. and and basically the uh, the system will fix itself absolutely. as it were absolutely so and you're again allowing that you're allowing that and uh, it's 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 uh, there is mandatory updates or critical fixes and there is optional updates like anything i'm, I'm going to get back to the real world like anything at all there's some things you really have to fix like a leaking roof and there's other things which are, you know, like a, a fancy rug. You can wait. Or right. you don't wait. So it, it's, it's completely up to you. You can control it. Uh, all the options to do that are on, on the left-hand side. It tells you what's available. Uh, I'm, I'm, but again, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing that I have it enabled. So that's supposing there's something very critical. They found a bug or something critically wrong, which was identified after you purchased your computer. Mm -hmm. And they have a fix for that. Uh, you can get those updates automatically. It'll download them, it'll install them. It's very transparent and it's very well done. So in some cases, like compatibility issues with uh, some software that say that you might purchase, yes. uh, there could be fixes that they have for that that'll then make the things work together yeah, better. And software and hardware. So you, you know, a new device comes out. You know, Windows has the compatibility. You can automatically download it. It'll kind of take care of itself. And Windows 7, uh, I've, I've used previous operating systems before. Windows 7 does a very good job. Okay. That. So, so that's that's your Windows update. Um, let's go further down. Power options, uh, not as critical when you're using a desktop, uh, but more critical when you're using a laptop. Uh, in terms of uh, how, con consider power options to be your gas mileage in your car, and how you would drive your car differently to get more mileage, depending on the situation that you're in. So, if you rev it up, you're going real fast. Uh, 
obviously you're going to use up the gas a lot faster. The same way if you're doing a lot of processor intensive. If you recall from the last episode, processor is speed. So if you're like speeding, you're going to use more gas. Same so way so how do they actually get it to use less energy? What are the uh, types of things? There is do? different settings. Again, uh, the payload in your car, lesser the weights. You know, if you're carrying heavy stuff, it's going to use more gas. So what we're essentially trying to do is the display, the screen. Okay, it's, it, it, it'll be a little less bright. It'll, it'll use lesser energy. The, the speed at which the processor runs, it'll go a little slower. You know, it'll go more optimal for the programs that you need uh, in terms of the way it runs background programs so that it actually kind of tweaks it for um, longer battery life. It may shut off the hard drive if you don't use it for a specific amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, you can set all those things up uh, uh, in your, in your it, it has a recommendation, of course, but you can set up, tweak it to what you want. And that way you can kind of make your laptop instead of say two hours, it's not going to double it. Maybe you get maybe 20%, 30%, which may sure. make the difference for you. And if you operate and off of batteries, that's certainly an absolutely. important Absolutely. And then I think about the environment too. I mean, if everybody uh, is uh, mindful about the settings, the, the cumulative effect would, would be very significant. Oh, yeah. So that's, uh, those are the settings. So even desktop users, I mean, definitely look at your power, power options and see if we can do something about it. Uh, backup and restore. Um, I'm going to click that, uh, kind of pull up the screen. Essentially what this does is it allows you to back up a set of files on your computer that you care about into another external device or on another location on your computer. And it's great if something goes wrong with your computer, you can kind of uh, back that up. And then what happens is it kind of creates something like a restore point where if, so for example, you're, you're experimenting something out and you know so you're going to have a lot of change, you care about the stuff that you currently have, you back it up and what it does is it backs up everything as it was to a specific space point in time, right? You can do other things. If things go terribly wrong, you can actually restore from that. It's almost like traveling back in time. It's kind of cool. You go back, kind of back in time to a point where things were working fine and bam, it just kind of worked from there. But it is important that you set this up so that you back up in the first place. Absolutely. Otherwise, that's a feature that you can't use. That, that is correct. So you set that to periodically do that. Yeah, it, it's definitely, especially if you really care about what's uh, saved on your computer, then that's definitely recommended. Very good. Uh, Shiv, we're going to take a break here for a minute or two, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about ways to get around your computer. Could you dedicate yourself to a worthy cause? Could you go the distance to keep a child healthy? Could you travel to the other side of the world to help eliminate polio? Could you? A Rotary member could. We're dedicated to connecting children with vaccinations and ending polio worldwide. All it takes is one person to make a difference, like me, like you. Could you help change the world? Will you? Rotary, humanity in motion. other extraordinary things. Welcome back to Service Above Self. Uh, we're here with our friend Shiv Vishari and he's telling us some things that we can do to make our computer run better than it did when we first got it. Absolutely and just kind of taking up from the from our break uh, we're going to jump right into administrative tools. And uh, let me just click through that. And there's a lot of things, more advanced um, options that we can do with administrative tools. But what we really want to talk about right now is uh, freeing up disk space and defragmenting your hard drive. And what essentially happens is when Windows is doing its own operations, like how we live our life, there's a lot of clutter and things we don't really want that we keep on gathering along with us. And at some point in time, like for example, you have a cup of coffee, the cups on the table, you know, it's, it's a little messy on the table and things add on. Uh, similarly with Windows and what 
um, uh, what free up this space does, it does various different kind of scans to see what are the temporary files that have been created, what are the files that you haven't used for a very long time, what are the shortcuts on your desktop that you know you may no longer reuse or the programs you may not have used, and it makes some recommendations so that you can actually clean up. It's almost like a cleanup operation all to kind right. of get rid of all those things. The then. Absolutely. So what do we got? And uh, so I'm just going to click on the, the the free up disk space, and it's just going to ask you what 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 do you want to clean? It's going to run through the run through what it has. It, it it gathers a lot of information along the way. So most computers have a C drive, but in some cases you might have more. Yes. Uh, in in my case, I have a C drive and the D drive. The D drive is more of a maintenance drive. It's got the you know the the, the core software or you know the, it's more like a setup kind of a space it's mm -hmm. a smaller drive in case i need to restore my computer f to the factory settings it mm -hmm. has some information out there but primarily c drive is what most people have and that's something you should do periodically um, so that's good more importantly it's a very interesting concept which is called defragmenting your drive and defragmentation is a very very nice concept and i would love to get back to the real world what happens is we have a lot of things that we own a lot of things that we keep all over the place, but we actually only use a small segment of those. And what defragment, defragmentation does is on the hard drive, when it is storing information, as we give it information, it kind of stores it wherever it finds space. And what happens though, is say you're cooking a meal, say your dishes are in the living room, your forks and spoons are in your, in your, in your bedroom, uh, the, you know, the appliances or anything else that you may use, of course, in the kitchen, but your refrigerator is in the garage. Now what happens is if you're going to cook that meal, you're going to run through all, you're going to be running around your house to actually get things going, and it's actually going to slow you down because the, the, the information stored in your computer, even though it's in the hard drive that we saw before, it's, it's, it's a lot of space that the computer needs to find where things are to actually perform at that level. Right, and it may not be sequentially It in the may same not be place. sequentially at all, because uh, you move files around, you move things around. Right, and of course the size of files changes, and, and with uh, bringing in things like temporary internet files, yes. you know, let's say for instance you have a file that's this big, Absolutely. and then you record new information to it, and now it's this big, well, you can't put it all in the same place. Absolutely. Well, half of it's here and half of it's someplace else. Absolutely. And so when you go to use it again, they have to search at different places on the hard drive, so Perfect. that would work better if it was fixed. Yes, and the, the kitchen example is obviously <laughs> kind of an exaggerated example, but that's essentially the concept. Yeah, well, it could even be worse than that. It could you know, be worse really. than that. So what this does, uh, unlike if you had that kitchen situation, it'll be very hard to move things around for you, but in this case, it's very easy. You just need to analyze and defragment your disk. And what it does is it looks at, again, it looks at all the records, it looks at what it's being uh, used more often, what are the files that are correlated together, um, and it moves them to a point which is faster to access and moves everything at the same place. So suddenly, uh, in the literal sense of the word, because the hard drive does have an arm that finds the data, mm -hmm. everything is in arm's length. So it's almost like having everything you need and you can just like reach out to it and the stuff that's related contextually, for say cooking a meal or, or how, however you may be living in your real life, it's all around and that task can happen a lot faster and something we didn't cover in the previous session is this is a great way to increase the speed of your computer. Oh, absolutely, because that's one of the things that slows it down over time is, is this fragmentation that takes place. Yep. Very good. So that's, that's, that's kind of our, our first section of system and, and security. Let's go to the network and the internet and uh, kind of cover some concepts for how does Windows 7 share things with, uh, with uh, either uh, the rest of the computers in your home uh, now this is kind of with the assumption that uh, there is some sort of a wireless network or a network. It's uh, becoming more and more standard that usually a household has more than one computer. They're all connected to the internet. And what this essentially does is it lets you choose a network to connect to and it lets you choose what are your sharing settings available when you're in or on that specific network. And what it enables you to do is there's a home group which as the name suggests, you know, I'm at home, I don't mind sharing more because everybody else is more trusted in that environment. So that's just an example of uh, uh, how you can be a part of a home group. It's a new feature in Windows 7, and it lets you share stuff with other uh, computers in, in the same network. Uh, likewise, there is um, other um, options you can have to actually connect to a specific network or a device um, as need be. And then you have your internet options, which is essentially connecting uh, your browser 
I mean, when you connect to your browser, you want to make sure you got the home page, you want to add favorites, places you go very often. So it kind of lets you set those things. There's a lot of settings out here. I would recommend most of the settings by default, whatever they are, are pretty fine. But it just, I'm just kind of tapping to the screen to say it's OK to tap through, see if something applies to you. And feel free to look at all these options. There's a lot of options out there. And if you check something, it's really OK because you can always uncheck it. <laughs> It'll get back to where it was before. So feel free to play around with uh, all these options that you have and uh, see if any of these options work for you. But it, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is there's a lot of customization. There's a lot you can do to make the computer work for you. So that's, that's the network and the internet. Uh, I'm going to go to hardware and sound. Uh, it's essentially um, uh, some of the tweaks and options that we currently have. For example, if we put, in, put something in your, if, like you put a DVD or a media disc in your player, it, you have the option for it to automatically play. It'll know the media that you've put in, and it'll start playing based on a program associated with the media. So it's really convenient. We don't have to really, you know. So you don't have to go and find the program. Exactly. It just automatically will start well, that any time that you put a new appropriate disk in the PC. It, yeah, and, and you can actually set what program you want. I mean, you can always go advanced, but there's something that's available. And in fact, if some of you have uh, put in a CD and it's, things have just started playing, you don't know why, and you don't like it, that this one place to come. That's probably the reason yeah. why is somebody has that feature <laughs> so, turned on. Exactly. You, you so, may not want and, to. so that's places you can go. I'm going to go over the rest of them really quick. Uh, sound is uh, you know just adjusting your volume, and there's different sounds. For example, when you click somewhere on the screen, error. There's an error message. It'll give a ting sound. You can tweak those sounds. There are different themes that are available. You may prefer some sounds more than others. So this kind of helps you customize that experience for you when you use your computer. Because there's some sounds you may just not like, and you can actually turn them off. Right, so and, that's and very you can good. change them to other ones you, you as can well. Change them to, to, to something you might prefer better. Absolutely. Uh, power options, we did cover some of the power options. Uh, there's advanced power options in terms of when you start your computer up again, and that's kind of what, what, what the setting is out here, is if the computer can go to sleep. It's one of the power options to save energy. So when you start it up again, do you want it to prompt for a password? So there are some of the other additional things that you can do, and sometimes you, you don't want it that way. You know, sometimes you put it to sleep, you, know, you set it for, say, 10 minutes, it goes to sleep, it's saving energy, and when you open it up again, you just want to go directly to that screen. And here's a place where you can actually make it require a password or disable the need for a password. So again, it makes it more convenient for you, it's less, it's less of a burden. That way you'll actually like your computer more than you do right now. <laughs> or if you do have a security concern yeah. and, uh, you know, if you were to walk away from your computer, it would Absolutely. prevent other people from, from coming uh, right tampering in. with it while Absolutely. you were away. So either so. way you look at it, it works for you. Yes. Excellent. Um, display, uh, I could uh, click in, but I'm sure we're going <laughs> to mess up the display <laughs> yeah. if we do that. Uh, essentially what it is, and we actually did this, you know, kind of setting the computer up, is we had to actually had to change this display to be more conducive uh, to, to kind of see on the TV. But the resolution is, is what we're talking about right now. And in some cases, uh, you know, higher resolution works for some computers. Some people prefer a lower resolution, and this is how it works. A lower resolution has bigger fonts. So a good way, sometimes uh, we have uh, some of the customers saying, it's too small, I can't find anything on the screen. Lower your resolution. It, it, it actually becomes bigger. Of course, you see fewer things on the screen but it may be more visible, it may suit your needs. So that's a great way to kind of make the computer look in, right, kind of in the fun of the word. In many cases, some you. of that text may not be definable that you can set the size, right. but as you say, by simply uh, lowering the resolution, resolution, it'll make each individual picture bigger, bigger. and therefore the, the actual e letters and numbers e bigger e as exactly. well. Exactly, and it's, it's kind of counterintuitive. Lower the resolution, high, bigger the size. Right. And it kind of works that way really well. Um, uh, kind of going to the next uh, uh, next section, you know, it's programs, and as you know, we've kind of mentioned it before. There's a lot of programs uh, that can be installed in the computers. It's like buying, it's like buying clothes. <laughs> to put it in the real world, you, you put on, you know, you put on different things. It's like buying different things for your house. Anything that you buy, it's like a tool. You buy it, and you can do more things with it that you couldn't do without a tool. A program is just that. It's things that you get on your computer to enhance the capability of the computer. And there's a million programs out there. Uh, some for business, some are free, some you know you, you, know, you want to use it's games and everything. So essentially uh, what this screen does is it helps you uh, install. On, um, in, installation is usually directly, you, you, you click an executable and it installs the program. But this lets you control or remove programs you don't need. Again, it's all about clearing up things, clearing up, clearing up 
space uh, that you may need for something else. So you say you have a big toolbox and you say, hey, you know what, I don't want that toolbox anymore. You want to get rid of that and maybe get something smaller or something that's more suitable to your current needs. So this screen would help you uh, get those programs in there, help you understand what's there. I mean, I, 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 I'm sure I have no idea of everything that I have in my house, but if I click on this link, I'll know what's, uh, what's, what's on my computer and that's, that's good to know. That's good. Uh, so certainly, by looking at all the files, it's, it's very difficult it's to very, tell yeah. um, what you have and what you don't Absolutely. have. Because that's the thing that I always find is it's 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 a maze. You know, it's like uh, where did I where, where, where did, did I go? leave something? Where uh, did I store something? I thought I had it here, but now it's gone. Absolutely. You know? So it's a, certainly a very difficult thing. And when you bring that up, uh, it's interesting because usually in the physical world, we actually want to know where it is. In a more of a technology world. As long as you know how to get to it with the link, it's as good as you found it. Right. So it's, it's a little different school of, you don't have to really know where it's sitting on your computer. <laughs> you need to know how to get to it, that's it. Yeah, it really organization well. is the key with that. We've only got about a minute left. In, 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 in closing here, is there any uh, tips or words of wisdom that you would <laughs> give to the average person about uh, uh, their experience with a personal computer? Well, no words of wisdom. <laughs> uh, tips, uh, definitely. It's, it's all we, we try and the message here is, uh, it's all about confidence, it's all about feeling comfortable. So feel free to explore, you know, embrace it uh, as you would with, your, you know, with anybody else in your family and it, it, it will speak back to you. I mean, if, 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 if you kind of get rid of the fear, if you go ahead and click, it's okay to click, it's okay to explore. And what we try to do with this session is say, this is what's available, even if you know what's possible, uh, it just enables you to actually go in and explore uh, whatever you have and kind of tweak uh, this computer or the technology to your needs and to your life. That's, that's, that's <laughs> fantastic. So uh, we certainly only got to cover just a, a, a very tiny bit sure. of this and maybe we can have you back again sometime, Shiv. My pleasure. Thanks for coming and thanks for giving us a hand. Hey, thanks a lot. So just a few more tips and, and personal computers and try to make our, the evil machine just a little nicer to us. Uh, so from all of us here at uh, Service Above Self, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, go out there and find yourself a worthy cause and lend a helping hand.